What? God, what a sick shot. It's a <laughs> visual effect. Oh, it turns out it looks super janky. <laughs> this is a very special one. We're reacting to our videos. Thank you to our sponsor Raycon for bringing you today's episode. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn how to save 15% on your first order. Hi, welcome back to another episode of VFX Artists React. My little baby's all grown up and off to college so I can come back down here and film some more videos with you guys. For those of you who don't know, Corridor Digital is a channel that's existed for nine years now. <laughs> we have over a billion views and we make VFX videos. There have been a ton of comments asking us to actually review the videos that we've made. Let's jump in. Shadow of Mordor. So this was a video we did five years ago. This is the only other official live action Lord of the Rings video in existence outside of the movies in The Hobbit. For those of you who do not recognize him, that little blue orc there is none other than Clint. Clint, get that human. <gasps> <gasps> He's getting Aladdin. <laughs> Punched. <laughs> I'm still that genie. Number one mistake we made with this movie is giving all the slaves the same wig. <laughs> right yeah, I know. That fish there is not a real fish. We originally didn't know if we we're gonna do the fish or not. Oh yeah. So nice. he's holding a knife. <laughs> And then later we replaced it with a fish, and it's a pretty convincing fish. No one ever realized it wasn't <laughs> real. I, I, by the way, there's like a little bit of forced perspective in that shot. He's not that much taller than Clint. He's a little bit closer to the camera, and Clint's a little bit further away, so it makes him look a lot bigger. So he's swinging at nothing. Clint is like a solid six feet back. <laughs> Anytime you see sword combat in film, and somebody gets stabbed, usually in, out, or slice. <laughs> but the thing they did in the animation for the game, Shadow of Mortar, which I loved, I had never seen it before, was people would get stabbed, and then the sword would get pushed through afterwards. <laughs> Doing that as an actual effect is very, very hard. How do you stab something into somebody and then push it through them? The answer to how you do that is lots and lots and lots of work. <laughs> <laughs> God, what a sick shot. So that blade of the sword right there, it's all fake. It's just the hilt that's real. As he pulls it out, uh, you motion track it, and then you track that in as a uh, liquid emitter. So that sword itself is actually where the liquid is spawning? Yes. And you can see it there. As he's pulling it out, <laughs> it's like actually emitting blood perfectly. And then I have it stop emitting blood the moment he stops moving. And I remember the rendering taking half an hour per frame. Yeah, the computer that Ren made those particle effects on basically had the power of a PS3. So if you guys are on old computers, there's no excuses. You can make this shot. It'll take a long time, but you can make this shot. So, do you guys remember how I did the last shot where he gets his head cut off? I do, I do remember you this. Do? You filmed Billy, aka Italian, in the background just swinging his sword, no one else is there. And then you filmed Zen, the king orc here, on a green screen in the same spot. Yes. And then a third element of the king sitting there and then just spinning around in frame so he can get his head actually rotating in place. We have once again another beautiful real flow simulation from Ren. I'd forgotten about the fact that I basically pulsed it. So it's like you have yeah. one big pulse of blood going up and then it stops and then it goes on again as if it's in beat with his heart. It's such a good touch. <laughs> but there's actually something tracked underneath all the blood there on both the, the body and the head. And it's like that little meaty circle. Yes, what I ended up doing is we have a, we have a prop head that has a neck stump on it. I photo scanned it. So I have a 3D model of, of these neck stumps, and I render those as totally separate elements that kind of cover up all the masking and fun stuff that's making this possible. <laughs> Isn't that grody? It's really grody. So I tracked Zin's face onto the head stump there too. Yeah, because yeah. the head stump actually falls out, but you just replaced the face of the stump with Zin's face. But it's all orcs, you know, so whatever. It's okay to kill orcs. I think that's like the message in this video. Block blockers. Look at that. It's a baby G. And a baby N. If you've never seen it before, every color repeats the same exact actions 
until a future clone that comes in potentially changes the course of events, thereby unlocking the past clone. So this is basically just a very complicated clone video yes. when it comes down to it. We'll just have a playlist of all the videos we talk about in this video as a link in the description below. This is when like the most we could afford for budget was buying five different colored shirts. So the lot we're shooting in, one of our friends, he grew weed and we helped him move to like the new lot. So he gave us a big bag of weed, but what we use that weed for is not for smoking, but instead we went on Craigslist and traded it for airsoft guns. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. Don't do drugs. Just honestly, trade, trade them, them for, for guns, guns. Apparently. <laughs> I want to talk about the three levels of camera motion here. You have a static camera where it's on a tripod, unmoving, such as the camera right here that's filming the three of us on the couch. Doing a clone with a static camera is the easiest way to do that. So that camera can film me here, and it can film me here, and we can just slice the frame in half, and now there's two of us. Next up, you have a nodal pan where the camera stays in one spot but can pan and look around. Now, this gets a little bit trickier when you're trying to do clone shots, but not that much trickier because you can still track the shot and just stick part of your frame back on and everything will line up but then you have the third level of camera motion, which is the hardest one to deal with for all types of VFX shots. And that's the translational camera movement. So it's not just panning and tilting in one spot, it's actually moving around the scene. So you're getting parallax, and the background's changing, and you're getting new perspectives on things, and that requires a representation of your world in 3D. So we actually tried to avoid that completely <laughs> when doing this video. One trick we're doing here frequently is combining a nodal move with a 3D move. And what this does is it gives the impression that we're doing a much more complicated VFX shot. In the shot where the white Nico and purple Nico run up to cover, we start actually with a nodal move, but then as we pan away with the white clone, we transition that shot into a 3D camera move because we begin chasing the other one. It's like the VFX shot ends the moment you pan away. Exactly. exactly. How do you think we did the shot? <laughs> Everything looks so good about it, except for two things. Sam, where's your shadow? What's happening to your feet? <laughs> you can see quickly how he did it when the camera starts to move. You want to have one Sam roll the tire and another Sam hide behind it. If Sam, the other Sam is a clone that's filmed in a separate shot, how do we get him to interact with an object that's from a different shot? The solution is to have Sam just kick in the air where the tire supposedly is, and he's just hidden behind the tire, so you don't actually see him interact with it. The 3D track of you into the shot's pretty solid there because you're evidently rotoscoped out and tracked into the second half of the shot there, right? Yes, yep. You can see there's random like glitches. You can also see white stripes up here under his legs when he kicks the uh, tire. Yeah. <laughs> and you see fingers for a brief moment on the side of the tire. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. so you know what? You don't see any of that in action. Well, maybe you do, but you do. definitely you do. when you're watching on your phone, you don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so here is probably my favorite video I've ever worked on. Fun fact, we still had to make the shots in the video too. <laughs> if, you, if you freeze frame on Sam's look of joy there, that's like real joy because he had just made the shot that we had tried 10 times in a <laughs> row and you had missed every one. So this video, the most challenging part about this was getting the footage that we needed to see on the other side of these portals. I'd seen other portal films up until this point, but no one ever really got the correct perspective down to what you would actually see on the other side of a portal. It's like a mirror. No way. Yeah, no way. So this shot in particular was, all right, well, we have a portal that's up above and we have a portal that's on the side. So not only do we need a camera angle that is up above on the bridge, we need to remember that we would actually be able to see ourselves. And so we had insane yeah. choreography <laughs> when it came to filming those little plates you see through the portals there. How did the basketball actually fall through the portal? Well, the funny thing is Nico picks up nothing the basketball was a filmed plate later because I just, I just spun it on my finger against the green screen later, rotoed that out and placed it on top, tracked it to Nico's finger there. We actually had real green screen portal sized cutouts yes. attached to the wall. So that's how Nico was able to be rotoscoped the, here. The basketball doesn't become real in that shot until it's about a foot away from touching the hoop. You ready? Check this out. Let's do this. So this, this shot right here is one of my favorite shots. How does Sam, in one unbroken shot here, run through the portal and end up physically on the other side of the street? So right here, we whip pan out, boom, we go to a new location. So this new shot right here, 
everything except the portal is CG. So everything around here is fake, and Sam's just jumping through a hole in a green screen. I'm just jumping through a basketball. hole in a green screen. <laughs> Not only can you see Sam run through the portal, you can see me run through the portal holding the camera. What? <gasps> see me stepping through it? <laughs> <laughs> and then Sam has to actually catch the basketball that's been hooked at him. I was the only one who could throw the basketball accurate enough <laughs> to get Sam to catch it. Ren, if you didn't know this, he used to be a mascot at basketball games. <laughs> oh my god. So, so he's super, super good at basketball in general. That's why this is all about basketball. <laughs> So this is a 3D model of me, by the way. Yeah. I just stood here like this when he photo scanned me and made Using a 3D a, model. Using an Xbox Connect. Using an Xbox <laughs> Connect, that's oh right. Oh my god. So also, this is a ragdoll here. And by the crazy, the crazy thing about ragdolls is you have to just kind of like throw them into the scene and hope it works out. And so I was through it once. Didn't work out too much pressure. I somehow need to get it to be like a dunk, and then just magically, like on my like fifth try, the rag doll just happened to fall, and the hand happened to hit where the rim of the basketball hoop was, and I just I didn't touch it from that point forwards. So the basketball hoop needs to actually be interacted with. It needs to be hit, and then needs to fall over. So on set, Ren just jumps up with his insane vertical and grabs the hoop and yanks the whole thing down. And Dude, I almost died from that. <laughs> you used to be a mascot. Like this is what you, <laughs> you keep bringing up the mascot. <laughs> like you were a professional <laughs> slam dunker. I did not work on this video at all, but it is one of the best videos ever to have graced the internet. This is and it was also one of the most disliked videos <laughs> on the entire channel. A lot of our video inspiration just comes from learning it to do an effect shot. Like, a new technology comes out, it's like, oh, we can do animation, we can do motion capture so much easier now with a Kinect. Let's do a motion capture video. Oh, it turns out it looks super janky. <laughs> but the thing is, is that's all actually every, people dancing. Like everyone actually did the move for their smaller character. Yeah, yeah just captured by an Xbox Kinect. Oh, I love these shots. <laughs> Kicks so hard, his leg falls off. And this is where things get dark and weird, and I think this is why most people started disliking this video, because it went a really weird route. <laughs> yeah, they eat the weak ones. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, like, anytime we'd shoot a video in LA, people be like, well, it looks like San Andreas. And I was realizing that we could actually pair up a lot of the stuff you see in-game in GTA with what's basically right outside our door. Mm -hmm. But this technology with the gimbaled GoPros is really what allowed us to do it. We had a stable, tiny, lightweight camera we could put at the end of a boom pole. We could have a perfect third-person camera that follows people everywhere. And, best of all, it was small enough to bring into locations where you normally could not film. We're not acting like humans in this, we're acting like GTA characters. Yeah, Jake nailed it, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Watch the guys in the background here. The they don't unnamed know. heroes. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> that, was, that was not acting. Those guys were actually like, what? <laughs> so this video was made possible from riding a boosted board. And so there, I, I was riding the boosted board. I jumped off to be able to go across the grass here. And now I'm waiting behind this car as Nico's wife and baby mama gets thrown <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> You can also see somebody hide behind the pillar oh, right there. Oh, it's Sam! That's me. It's Sam. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but look in the rear windshield there. If you just watch it, you can oh, see Ren yeah, can scoot see up. Him. There oh, he is. There he is. So. And then it immediately cuts to a car chasing behind the Porsche here. I'm just jammed out the sunroof, trying not to fly out of the car. Using the world's longest boom pole. The okay, sign. This is actually something I've always been curious about. So you guys actually shot at the Los Angeles Gun Club, but at the beginning of this, it says Los Santos. It's a visual <laughs> effect. In the game, this particular location exists, and that's two blocks away from our studio. I took the, the actual text that was there that said Los Angeles Gun Club, and I just rearranged the letters. <laughs> How did you make the T? I think that one was custom. I think I had to make that myself, which <laughs> yeah. is why it, it sticks it, out. Yeah, it does. Now that I look at it, it totally sticks out. Those are real muzzle flashes, by the way. No, they're not. 
Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I think. I think. No, the bullet casings were real. The bullet casings yeah. were bullet real. Case. Like muzzle flashes are faster than cameras can capture. Every once in a while, he would shoot, and we wouldn't see the I'm, flash. So I just recomposite some of I, them back. So <laughs> something I really want to point out about our mentality here at Quarter is that like you don't have to make your effects perfect. It's it's fun and it's better when your effects are really good. I'd say you took these effects to like 80 to 90 percent as opposed to like 95 to 100 percent. Mm -hmm and they're good enough they, to elicit the reaction we wanted to get out of viewers. We're just like, whoa, that's crazy. It's like GTA 5 in real life. Yeah. Like the money falling on the ground is just like a simple little like simulation. It looks good enough. It's really just about understanding what your content is, where it's going, who's watching it. This is, this is a YouTube video. The majority of you guys watch our videos on phones. So mm -hmm. I, I know that much. So that means I know what I can get away with here. And you have the time budget to really heavily consider. It's like, we're making these videos every other week. You only had a week to do the visual effects because we spent a whole week filming it. Good times. We've made a lot of videos. We have a playlist of all the videos we just talked about on the Corridor channel. It's down in the description below. Oddly enough, a bunch of people don't even know that we have a Corridor channel. If you guys have seen some of our work that you've really enjoyed and want to know more about, leave it in the comments below. And if we do this again, we'll check that out. <sighs> Man, so many memories in all of these videos. I mean, I remember when we filmed Shadow of Mortar and I had to spend five hours every morning in makeup so that I could just be an orc all day on set. You know what would have been fantastic? Having a pair of Raycon earbuds, courtesy of today's sponsor. Now, while I already have a pair now, it would have really been great to have a pair then because they have no dangling wires or stems, meaning that they would have fit right into that orc mask. I could have been playing Lord of the Rings music all day. I mean, heck, I remember way back in the day on the set of Clock Blockers, it would have been great to have a pair of Raycons back then, and we would have been able to afford it because Raycon earbuds are about half the price of other premium brands. The only difference between Raycon earbuds Buds and corridor videos is that you're not gonna get a discount on your corridor videos because they're already free. But if you go to buyraycon.com slash corridor crew, you'll get 15% off your first purchase of Raycon earbuds. What's not to love about that? Dude, we didn't even talk about Boston Dynamics. We'll talk about Boston, I think, when we're done with the second one, which is coming out very soon. I'm, I'm liter I literally can see Clint working on it right now. <laughs> so there's Nick. And here's our little reaction screen, and then above it is Clint working <laughs> on Boss Town 2. <laughs>